You're welcome to another Monday. It is uh, time for Good Afternoon Ghana today and we are, of course, focusing or zeroing in, closing in into the NPP. They are at the national level and um, it's time for some candidates or members of the party to pick nominations file at the national level to, um, you know, occupy certain national offices of the party. Uh, some are asking for new leadership, some are asking for old members, whatever it is, it's still going to be a new administration for a new government, should they be able to break the eight. So this afternoon, uh, we're having a discussion with Prince Kamal Guma who is, you know, vying for uh, national deputy, national youth organizer for uh, the party. So we'll be talking to him. I'll tell you more about him. I'll give you a little profile about the gentleman that we're talking about. And then um, we, we will uh, get to him. Uh, so as a national youth organizer, what will he be able to do? Remember that we've actually hosted a couple of, yeah, national youth organizers. But let's see how different this one is going to go. Let's go for a breather. When we come back, I'll give you the profile and then we'll get to talk to Prince. Welcome back. We're on Good Afternoon Ghana and like I said earlier on, we're having a, a, an interaction with Prince. Uh, Kamal Guma, who is vying for the National Youth Organizer for the MPP. Prince, you're welcome. Good afternoon to you. Thank you, Ifua. Welcome. Thank you. Are you a Please controversial person? No, I am not. I've never been part of any controversial. So, no, I'm not a controversial person. Thank you. Take note of his answer. Let's go for the profile of Prince. I'll come back to him. So, uh, there are a few things that we just want to know. Okay, if it can be projected for us. All right, so um, just a little summary about Prince. Uh, so uh, Prince Kamal Guma, MPP, National Youth Organizer, hopeful, of course, summarized policy proposals for uh, policy proposals for the youth wing. All right, so it says, I introduced measures to make Tescon more vibrant with a, re with a focus on recruitment, training, revamping, and spirit of volunteerism in members. Introduce a national welfare program for youth organizers, their deputies, and TESCON executives. Okay, so these are what Prince wants to do. We can get his profile maybe later if the producers give it to me. Uh, a carefully thought through program to ensure jobs to directly, uh, uh, to go directly to youth organizers and by extension, register youth groups in constituencies. Now, um, born in Boko, to a political family to trace their route to the UGCC in 1940s. My grandfather, Imura Salifi, was the minister of Alpa uh, region in the Buzia government in 1969. He was also secretary of the propagation in the north in the 1940s, pre-independence against the British, against the British. So Adam Amandi, also my grandfather, served as a deputy minister of health and later moved to the Ministry of Trade uh, under the Buzia government. My father served as a constituency chairman of the Boko, of Boko from 1996 to 2005 and deputy regional organizer from 2006 to 2012. I was a border patrol agent at the age of 14 in the 1996 general elections, polling agent in the 2000 general elections um, and Polling agent in 2004 general elections. I was the Nassar coordinator for the Jersey chapter of the NPP USA from 2014 to 2018. Member of the 2016 USA branch campaign team for Saboba, Karaga, Kushegu, Boga, and Paga. Deputy youth organizer of MPP USA branch from 2018 to date. Member of the um, Trainer, trainee team of the 2020 general elections, member of the campaign team for Yagaba, Kabore, Kaswa, and Bantama in the 2020 general elections. Now, summarize policies. Okay, I think uh, these are policies for the youth you wink. Okay, let's go through that quickly. Um, the following are a broad thematic areas of our campaign message to conduct a thorough profiling of the youth organizers and the deputies to assess their, uh, and identify their priorities, issues, and to fashion out a 
practical plan to solve these priority issues identified through my tenure as National Youth Organizer. A carefully thought through program to ensure jobs go directly to youth organizers and by extension, register youth groups in the constituencies, ensure youth organizers have a role to play in the selection of local scholarship beneficiaries at the district, introduce national welfare program to youth organizers and deputies, TESCO and executives by extension, the youth wing with an officer appointed as the youth wing secretariat in charge of the program. There will also be a national welfare, sorry, a regional welfare officers appointed to be in charge at the regional level. Um, a national call center will be set up at the National Youth Wing Secretariat to take complaints and suggestions about the working of the youth wing to ensure we have an all-inclusive youth and institute an annual youth program platform with youth organizers and deputies as part of measures to run a transparent and accountable administration, facilitate the construction of a model youth, regional youth secretariat of all 16 regions to be named by persons who have contributed tremendously to the development of the youth of the party in those regions. Introduce measures to make Tescon more vibrant with a focus on recruitment, training, revamping, and uh, the spirit of the volunteerism in members. Welcome back. So that's uh, a little about Prince Guma. You're welcome once again. Thank you, Fred. Appreciate that. I'm happy to be here. Happy to see you again. Thank right? you. Right. Yeah. I met you in Kumasi. Oh yes. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, you interviewed me and our former general secretary, uh, Kwabena Aj. Japan. Yeah. Japan. Yes. All right. So you started politics at age 14, and yes. you were an, a polling station agent at yeah. age 14. At the age 20. Uh, at the age 18. At age 18? Yeah. Uh, 20, it was, um, I was an activist. I wouldn't say I was into, uh, I didn't, I wasn't the age of voting, you know, but you know, there's, uh, when you are in a, a border town, there's this uh, foreigner that comes in to vote. And our party was very vigilant in 1996, and they wanted to stop at that uh, practice of foreigners coming, which my uh, my town, Boko, happened to be a, a border town. So my cousins and uncles were chosen by the party to go and pre prevent and protect foreigners from coming in to vote. And yeah, at the age of 14, um, I developed interest in politics, especially MPP. So at the age of 14, I was at the border patrol with my cousins and uncles to make sure that foreigners don't come in to vote. Give me a picture of age 14, what you were doing at a border, a border, uh, with a border patrol team, because it's a little dangerous. Yeah, sometimes. it is. It is. Uh, because, you know, MPP is actually a party that I think I have in my blood. So just sitting home and seeing my cousins and uncles that were chosen by the party to go on to the border patrol, I was very excited. I, I wanted to be there. And as you said, yeah, it wasn't an easy thing going into the bushes to make sure that foreigners don't come in to vote. Uh, I think it was a, uh, I was honored to be part of that group. And I can tell you it wasn't easy, but we were able to at least uh, stop some from coming in to vote. And we went ahead to at least uh, do a very good job for the MPP in 1996. So basically, you were there to help the patrollers to yes. stop foreigners from coming in? Yes. So in your uh, personal efforts, or by your personal effort, what were you able to do? Uh, I was there. Uh, you know, if you're at the border town, when you see in, uh, a human being that's not part of your community, you know. So that was easy for us to uh, identify and probably uh, prompt the police, or would I say the immigration or custom officers. Um, this is a foreigner. And most of the time, the immigration officers or the uh, the custom, the border custom, will, I mean, confront the person. And most of the time, we are correct. We, they find out that they are not uh, Ghanaians because we know each other. You know, if you see a Nigerian by the accent, you know. You see a Togolese by the, at time by the dressing and the accent, you know, no, he's not from Ghana. So we being in a border, patrol, a border town, it was easy for us to identify uh, the, the foreigners to the police or to the immigration for them to confront them. And we find out that most of the time they are foreigners and the immigration have to turn them back. So you are the northern path? Yes, I'm the northern path. Uh, yes. How different uh, do they look or sound? 
You mean the human beings? Yes, I mean the foreigners. When they the cross. foreigners. I, I, when I, they I, the look or sound. Yes, I think you can, mostly, I would say, I, I differentiate us with them based on their accent and their dressing. Uh, yes, our dressing is totally I different. I don't know if you A picture of you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, their dressing, actually, you know, their dressing is totally, totally different. Like a Nigerian and a Ghanaian, you cannot use a dressing to differentiate it because our... A line of dressing is almost the same, you understand. But the Togolese in the Burkina Bay or Nigerian or Malian, you are quick to <laughs> even our haircuts are different. You mm. understand? And you can use those things to know that oh he's from Burkina. Uh, or if a Nigerian from... is coming from Burkina, something. How will you know? If a Nigerian is coming from Burkina, trust me, if I talk to him, I will know that he's from Nigeria. I know the Nigerian accent. Because so, I'm from the border town. So why do they allow you to talk to them? Do you were you are such a small boy. Yes, not only did I was the only one talking to them, but I, I, my cousins, though that, that was elderly and were up of age in politics, they were the most doing the talking. I was there to support them for us to do the, the border patrol, but I was not actually the one interviewing the, the, the I mean, the foreigners. My, my cousin would approach him or, or quickly call the police, I mean, the immigration, is this a foreigner? So the immigration will go closer, and during interaction, some of them did, did admit that they were actually foreigners, and some of them were even uh, arrested with a voter's card in their hand in 1996. Yeah. Let's come down to, or uh, not come down, go outside the country. Yeah. Um, so at what age did you start you know, taking official positions? So reading your profile, obviously you, 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 you were born and bred into a UP tradition, Yes. right? So at what age did you travel outside the country and go and hold offices? I think at the age of 25, I think that was uh, late 2005. Uh, I would say I started serving the party as the youngest. In the year 2000, I was a pool agent for the late Hawa Yakubu, uh, the Iron Lady, if you may remember. Right. And then I was actually the youngest, if, if, probably if not the region, maybe you would say the youngest in the country. You are talking about the 2000 general election, and at the age of 18, I just turned 18 then, and I was willing to go to a, a pool agent, which I think that time, it wasn't easy. Um, you can agree with me that 2000, not everybody wants to do politics. People were scared to do politics, especially in the North, especially in Boko. But my love for MPP, was like nothing could have stopped me from becoming a pool agent in 2000. So I took the opportunity, and my then my biological father was the, chair, the constituency chairman. <clears throat> and you have parents that were, I mean, protect, preventing their kids to join politics. My father have no choice. When I said I want to go to a pool agent, he has no choice to let me go. And I went to one of the, the rough places for a pool agent, you know, to make sure that Hawa Yakubu has become an MP in 2000. So that's where I started seven for the party. So what, which polling station was this? I, saw, uh, I, I presume it was rough. It was rough. Actually, I did two polling, if you imagine, right? I did two polling station in 2000. Okay? How? Okay. I was first sent to uh, post, uh, Pusiga Post Office. That's where Howard Yakubu was born. That was one of the roughest places that was, I, I, I was sent. I was there and I was able to do my work and tell them, oh, we were leading. Like the way the voting was, pattern was going out, we're leading. So there was a, a situation at Dega, another rough place in Baku, that, um, you know, the vote was stopped in, in the process. And then, um, uh, they came to and then take me to go to Baku town to eat my lunch. You know, I think it was even Ramadan, but I, no, it wasn't for lunch, but they took me out, no, sorry, to go and vote, yeah. Mm -hmm to go to my polling station and vote because it was a Ramadan time. So when I was in Baku and they were taking me back to Puzga, they found out that there was a, a situation in Dega whereby the, the election was stopped. So they have to quickly take me there to Dega to be a, a, a pulley agent, which I was in Dega till 7 p.m. One of my uncle, um, he's in the U.S. now, um, Mohamed Wuni, Chase, he actually came there in the evening and saw that the, the situation was so rough and he has to tell me that I should jump into the police car and leave after we did the counting and stuff. So, so you use the police car? Yeah, to leave with the, pool, uh, the ballot box. 
to the coalition center. Oh, okay. The, the, the car that carries the, yeah, the ballot box. Yeah, yeah, the ballot box. It's not so. like a police car that you were using for party No, activities. no, no, no. That we couldn't do that because we're in opposition. We couldn't have even used a police so car. You, but you actually, would have used it if you were in government? Um, no, I don't think so. That's, are you, are that's you doing that now? No, we don't. That's about, We have our own private cars. We have videos that shows that. that um, I doubt it. Probably it might of, be. Of a, government I, officials, national executives, I party think it executives might be. The, are you sure the Using video, police vehicles. Are you sure those videos have not been doctored? I might think so. Well, it, when you say videos are doctored, what do you mean? Meaning the video has been tempered with. It might oh. be a, 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 a photo shoot or something. You know, now, now it is. There's a lot you can do with video. You're, I'm, you're, you're undermining the work of the journalist. I am not undermining the work of the journalist, but I can tell you that as the party that I know as an MPP, there is no way we so, are going to abuse so the power by using a, them. So you think there's a journalist in this country today mm -hmm. who doctor a video? Um, and, and as long out. as MPP wouldn't do that, I don't know where he got those videos. I have to watch those videos and see where exactly those videos are My coming from. If you get those videos, let's show it to him. Let's see <laughs> if he can prove that it has been doctored. But, <laughs> but let's focus on you. Right. Are you, are you. Have you ever been a member of any vigilante group before? No, I've never been one. Do you I'm, know any of them? No. Have I'm, you heard of some of them? Um, not really. You haven't heard any single... No. Name of vigilante Name, group. No. I would say probably you read on news and you hear about all these groups, but I've, I've never had actually direct uh, conversation or interaction with them. And so which groups did you hear? Can I even mention any problem? I forgot. Uh, but, 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 not, um, you know, but actually I'm, I'm hearing just... the U.S. accent now. <laughs> you forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. Um, um, you know. Yeah, actually, I do read some of them in the news uh, about some other things, which I think is rather unfortunate. Ghana, we happen to be one of the, the peaceful countries in the world, and I'm proud to be a Ghanaian citizen. And I think if there's anything that we, the society, can do to uh, stop that, those kind of hooliganism and other stuff, I would really appreciate it. But It will be I've interesting to see how you can work, should you win this election, how you can win, work to discourage to disband the groups. We have laws, yes, but it looks like we need a human face to it as well. Uh, we need a, a human touch that, that would put it into a proper perspective. If the youth really want to go into security, this is how to do it. Now, I, 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 reading in between lines of you, you know, being used at, at polling stations, sometimes it's very important to use people who know sometimes how to use weapons. Is it because you were in the US, uh, they thought that, well, you are ex uh, no, actually trained. No, actually, that was before I even traveled to the U.S. I was, uh, 2000, I was in Ghana. 2004, I was in Ghana. It oh, was, that was before you yeah, traveled? Yeah, before I traveled. I think it was because I went for training for the uh, EC, how to do a pulley agent, and I was very vigilant when it comes to those things. I don't think it has to do with weapon. I think it was just me being serious of my own. Job ethics. Uh, I'm somebody that I don't joke with uh, uh, my job's ethics. So I think that was the main reason, and... And it's, it's just common sense. If I see that uh, this serial number doesn't tell with this serial number, I was just going to uh, resist and call the EC to order, you know. So I don't think it was after to do, do with it? weapons. Uh, you, just, you just pumped the... 18, how were you calling the EC to order? Uh, the, the EC was there. And I think the rules were, was what? Um, when you see something that goes wrong or you are not comfortable, from the, uh, I mean, the one of the EC officials, and they will come and address it. You cannot take anything into your hand there because that, as when the voting was going on, the EC is actually in charge. So I prompt the EC, this thing that was going on is not right. Or if I see underage, which happened, you understand, I will see an underage coming. We, we know, don't, like, we know kids. So when I see underage coming, I will just tell the, the EC, hey, she's underage, you know, you don't understand. And then and by then, they will stop, they will verify and at some point, they will see that actually the person too is underage. But at times, they will see that maybe it's the features that make the person look like underage. The younger. And if I see that they are making sense, I'll let the person go. But, um, and especially somebody coming with another person ID to vote. Those were the things I was taught to stop. And I'll do that with the permission of the EC. I'll just prompt the EC, oh, like he, he, the picture is different. He's not the person in the picture. Uh, wow. Yeah. So that was my job as a pool agent. You must be a vigilant person. No, I don't think so. Oh, yeah, if you say vigilant, yeah. like, yes, yes, I am. Um, 
I'm serious with my job. Like whatever I'm doing, you know, I'm very, very serious at it. Uh, because I don't play with my work. You know, that the number, the most important thing in work is uh, don't compromise uh, your work ethics. So I'm always, whatever you put me, wherever you find me doing um, whatever I'm doing, whether job, personal work, you know, anything, you know, and by the way, I'm a footballer too. I used to play football. So if I'm playing soccer, I'm very serious at it. So I don't play. You play football? Yeah, I used Did to you play, play in Ghana? Yeah, I play in Ghana. I think I play uh, serious football. I was actually part of the uh, uh, interregional team in 1996. At 14 years old, we play interregionals all the way to Sunyani. This 14 was the star of your life. Yes, I think so. That's, that was the time I was popping, you understand? So that's, uh, that I was, um, yeah. So yeah, I did play football uh, and I was good at it. Yeah, uh, I think I started at primary four. I was playing for JSS. What do you think of Ghana's football today? I uh, think it's uh, we are up and coming, and our my my goal or my dream. They're still up and coming. It, yes, because my when I say up and coming, when I was growing up, right, when you hear uh, this in Bafakwa, you hear Ashanti Kotoko. The stadium was like full of supporters. Like that time, I heard uh, Tony Yebua didn't even wanna play all these big clubs in Accra and Kumasi, he was comfortable at uh, Kweu United because he was having fun, you understand? But now if you turn and look at our local league, um, all we do is about Manchester United, Barcelona, Real oh, Madrid. So we're not up and coming, we've backtracked. Yeah, we backtracked, you understand? And no, I'm, when I say up and coming, right now you can see the talent that you have more than 20, uh, I, I mean, academics, oh. uh, football academics around. During my time, I think the only academy that I knew and I went for um, a justify and couldn't qualify was in Sunyani, somewhere around Sunyani, in the Brown region, uh, during 1997 then. So that was the only one I know. But right now, you can count countless, time, countless days in, uh, uh, football academies in uh, Ghana here. So I think on that part of, I mean, uh, reviving the talent, yeah, we are doing good. But when it comes to uh, the local league, our I pray that we we'll, like imagine us buying jerseys every uh, every season for Manchester United or Chelsea. Imagine if we can turn that thing into Kotoko and Haas and the other local teams. We are going to make good money, and our teams will actually be able to pay their players. I mean, good salary. You're a good footballer. Yes. Your parents didn't encourage you to. Pursue football? No, I, I think my dad, my dad, too, I can say, my dad did play football too, but I, I don't think um, uh, they went into me becoming a footballer. They weren't into you know. it. No, they weren't into it. They didn't it. like the idea. Yes, my dad. I think when I went for the uh, uh, the listen, the justify in Sunyan, he actually paid, and my football clicks was always by, like being bought by him, bought my by my father. You know, but when I went for the um, the justify in Shinyani and couldn't qualify, and I was, I mean, sent back to Boku, you know, and my school, like, I didn't do well, so I have to repeat a class. He just got mad and was like, listen, you just got to focus in school, not on football again. And I'm, I was happy that I was uh, repeated, because when I repeated, I be, when I was on the other class, I, I was like, what, 26, 27, when they are talking about 50 students. But when I repeated, I'm sure then if you can't, I will come somewhere around the first 10, 15 students. So I was happy that I was repeated. Like, I was mad because my friends and others have, like moved to the other class. But when I completed JSS and I was in SS, I was like, God was like, he, yeah, was right, because right now, I was even confident among my new students, like, you know, so, yeah. So, well, um, I don't know, maybe a little bit before you, we go on to other issues, football, what do you think can be done about juvenile football in Ghana? Juvenile football, I think what we need to, generally, I would say we are doing good. You can see uh, the former player, Osei Kufo, Stephen Apia, they have their children and they make sure that their children are training in Ghana. I'm just mentioning a few. Abedi Pele has his children that train in Ghana, both uh, in Ghana and France, that are doing better. I, I know football academies that are actually doing best. So I think we just need to focus on investing in them. And how can we invest in them until our local 
teams or our local uh, clubs are being funded well. And we, the citizens, can, can make the local clubs uh, being financially stable. When we start buying their jerseys, every season when they change their jersey, then we buy it, you know, go to the uh, park, you know, put Manchester United, Real Madrid on the side, you know, and make our, our, our team. And I think when I become a, a, a national youth organizer, and inshallah, I'm going to be a national youth organizer, I'm not going to leave that one out. I'll make sure that I, we practice of for us, by us. When I say for us, by us, meaning as Ghanaians, we should appreciate our own. Let's push in our more, more energy into Ghanaian uh, football. And I think with the, a little help from the government, when I am a youth organizer, and I happen to like our president, who is much into sports, I think if I tell him that we wanted to support our, cl our clubs so that, uh, you know, with the help of people like you as well to change uh, the narrative of uh, this Champions League, uh, Serie A and English Premiership, I think when we start showing more Ghanaian football, maybe the next generation might grow up with the mentality of actually paying attention to their destiny. But you have a TV station or a, a this and, um, that will show you more of a foreign lake than a local lake. So I think in both hands we need to look at it. That'll be a debate for another day because the, the conditions <laughs> involved also <laughs> sometimes come. So maybe I just pray you win this election and Thank then let's you. see what you can do because the conditions are very, very difficult. So sometimes we even show local uh, leagues. Let's move into Kaswa. Right. What were you doing in Kaswa during that day of shooting? Day of shoot. Kaswa is my home. My, my big sister, Honorable Hal is the MP of Kaswa, and I, I actually, I'm a resident in Kaswa. So uh, if you ask me what, what was I doing in Kaswa, I'll be, get confused. So were you with her the day that uh, there was, I don't know if I should, I should say, a uh, gunshot scare or something during the politics? Actually, I wasn't there with her, but I was always around her. That's my big sister. And I was always around her uh, to, I would support her and I was always around her. But unfortunately that day I wasn't in town. I was actually with my other big brother in Kumasi to I mean, help him do his uh, thank you. So what was your name service. mentioned? Because um, we're told that those warning shots were coming from one of you. Uh, I don't know. Actually, I don't, I've, this, listen, I wouldn't say this is my first time of hearing it. But if you go and look all the legal tussle around this issue, Prince Kamal Guma's name wasn't there. I think it was just people that feel <laughs> uncomfortable. They think that because she's my big sister and I'm, I'm around her, they thought I might be there that day. But actually that day I wasn't there and I cannot speak much of uh, something that happened and I wasn't there. You but what do you make of what happened? What happens? Um, okay, this is what I understand as a Ghanaian, right? Uh, you have a right to defend yourself, then that's uh, 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 legally. If you feel under attack. Yeah, if you feel under attack. And if my sister feel that she was under attack, which I think, listen, I'll try and... Um, have you ever met her before? Yes. Okay. She, Are you, you were not there. How did you know she was under attack? Oh, no, that, that is... I'm perceiving what the police... In the police report, like what we all of us have seen, yeah. I heard she was under attack, and um, she was... Um, uh, you know, her life was in danger, and uh, by the constitution, uh, she has the right to defend herself. So that was what she did in defending herself, and I applaud, I applaud her for defending herself because right now it would have been another story. We have an MP that gets shot and killed. I wouldn't let my sister somebody kill my sister because of politics. So I stand with her 100 percent for the for defending herself. I, w I was proud she's my big sister for defending herself. The constitution gives her the right to defend herself. You have understand? not been able, you are only depending on the police's report. You have not been able to establish that indeed she was under attack and so she defended herself. I can herself. tell you. Plus the MP who died, the, yeah. the, the, the circumstances are different. No, you know? I, I don't, I don't she was see. in the open, okay. broad daylight. There were people there. If she's ever going to be attacked, there were bodyguards who could protect her. Okay, this is what I'm saying. Number one, her bodyguard was, hasn't reported to work then. That's number one. So who she, was she with? No, she was by herself with uh, this. She was, it was a regular this and patrol. And she never believed that, like the way she's been loved in Kaswa, somebody will come at her. You understand? And this is what some people don't even know. And um, with due respect to the media, Ghanaian media, I think they didn't do their work well. 
The motorbikes that were attacking her, there were weapons there. Police report knows it. The motor that were burned there, there was a weapon there. Those who were trying to circle her. But nobody talks about that. It's sad. You understand what I'm saying? At least there should be, have been a clear, give the, the woman a, a fair share of, uh, uh, of justice. But you cannot pick something, the police knows it. And this is something that is important. These pictures in the motorbikes, that shows that there was a weapon in the motorbikes that were trying to attack her. These three motorbikes, and with one car, a female with who? I think she was just walking with one person or something like that. And by so now we were going to feel sorry and you agree with me that there are reports from BNI, from CID, from national security, that how our control is a target of, it's, it's there in 20, uh, during 2020 election. It's there, and I believe that one of our uh, proud MP, Honorable Kenya Japan, even mentioned that her name was, uh, like she, he came across a name that were supposed to be assassinated, and her name was there, you know, so she was scared. Yeah, but we have a, a national security CID's officials whose appointees yeah. are the government of the day. Yeah. Uh, uh, so it, it's not the general public. The general public doesn't go with everything that are said. Right. Usually when reports are out, you have people who douse their reports mm -hmm. and question a few things. Right, and so right. It's okay. It's normal for people to doubt and question if there is fault that starts. I do agree that, especially when it comes to situations like that. I do understand and I agree. But I just feel that uh, uh, when they said she did it out of because she wants to do this, a lovely woman. Listen, I'll, I'll take you one of these days to her house, her private house, and I'll tell her you want to go back again. She's, she's down to F. You know, when you see how it comes in and you met how it comes in, in her house she's or not anywhere. A no, she's not a Rambo. You oh know, my goodness. You know in God. the media they're describing her as Rambo. Yeah, that's, that's how they are doing. And it's very sad because she was trying to protect her life so that she can go home to her kids. She's a mother, you understand. But she, uh, she appears uh, uh, boisterous than a regular woman. She's boisterous than a regular woman. She appears to uh, have a certain strong posture than what a, a regular woman would have. Um, yes, I think she's a woman that has principles, and she doesn't want to compromise her principles. She will give you the respect as a human being that you need, you understand? This is a woman that make it, uh, even me being her brother, if I do wrong, she will just look into my face and say, call me Brad Carmel. Well, so, when you say brother, well, let's get a clarity, biological yeah. brother. Yeah, she wants to say Brad, Brad Carmel. No, she I mean, are you, are you his, her biological brother? Uh, family related brother. Family related. Yeah, family related brother. Yeah. I see. You work with the Iron Lady, you're working with Howard Kumsi. Yes. You just like working with strong women. Um, I like working for MPP. So, whoever is in the trail that I can work for the MPP, yeah, I will, uh, I will, I will join. And if we're, it's not only them that I worked for, you understand. I was in the United States when there was by election, I was in this country. So, it, it wasn't only because they are iron, iron women, but mm -hmm. I, I work for different, I mean, constituencies. And you can see it in my profile, I've, I've been part of other constituency campaign team members. Well, let's go into the MPP uh, and, uh, you know, some of the promises. I have a constituency, I'm just, uh, cons sorry, what is your, your the, the manifesto? Yeah, Thank you. manifesto yeah. So I'm just trying to, but what do you think has been the performance of this government so far for the youth? There was a video that we play a lot. Uh, I think on Good Morning Ghana, where we say that, oh, Nanado was making reference to Arab Spring, and he said that, well, you know, in Arab Spring, the story started with a young guy who uh, lit himself up because the youth was being abandoned, the youth was not being taken care of, and so that was when he was in opposition, throwing a caution to the government. Today, the situation is worse about the youth. I wouldn't say worse, but if you say the situation is worse, I think you have been unfair to this government. Unemployment has gone up. No, but you have to look at the situation. We have a government in 2012 that boldly tell any Ghanaians that he's not going to recruit anywhere. You understand? Like he wasn't recruiting anything. And we have Nana Aro that came and did the opposite and was able to recruit almost 2.2 million jobs. At least we, we have to give credit to Nana Aro. Plus and this Napco? Two, say it again? Plus Napco? NAPCO is part of it, and uh, yes. But you know the situation with NAPCO. The situation... NAPCO is not a per permanent job provision yes. uh, vehicle. Okay, and, and, and I'm from United States, and during, you know, when Barack Obama came, United States was in a recession. We and some of us were actually, we, they, they didn't call it NAPCO, 
But there was agency. They call us agency. They will never give you a permanent job. They will give you job that are um, was in the part time. Okay. They call it. And um, later on, if something happened, you can get uh, this in um, a permanent job somewhere. And you go. So I think that was the same thing that we were rolling out Napco. And we never told Napco that it was going to be permanent. From there, do you know there are Napcos that became permanent into other institutions? Yes. There are NAPCO's uh, employees that actually move to permanent position in other jobs. I don't think that you have uh, gotten the information of officials in those institutions complaining that you are there and they will call you, they're bringing, they're bringing a NAPCO, uh, some agent or NAPCO, somebody, he comes and th there's no JD for the person, the person stays there till they close, they go home, and then the month you pay them. And they are just, there's no productivity from them. I, I, you I, haven't I, picked up that information? I, I actually, you should be worried about no, that. No, I actually haven't came across such a news. And I can tell you that all the NAPCO places that I've been to, like you're talking about even, you know, we have some that are working under the, the custom borders and Gapua and other stuff. I can tell these are very, very productive. You, they don't even see it. They work. So about somebody saying that he's not a NAPCO member and he doesn't... Uh, uh, where he, he just go and sit down and take uh, salary. I cannot talk on that because I've never seen one. I've never this No, but what you were talking about, I haven't seen it. But yeah. you expect me to go by that, right? So take it from me, from, from the, the line of my job. Okay. We also speak with people, people from high places who are in the offices that give us the information. Right. And I'm telling you that these things are happening. Okay, so this is what I, I'm going to do as a youth organizer, deputy youth organizer of the USA, and a national youth organizer to be, inshallah, by next month. I will make sure I follow up with those things, and I will, I will talk to uh, the authorities. If you come to work, you need to be productive. You can't just come to work and sit down and go home. No, but that is when there is an office for them. And when I say an office, I don't mean the structure. Yeah. But I mean when there is work for you. Because every office must have uh, a job description for every yeah. individual that is there. Because you need to give me productivity to before you deserve, deserve any yeah. Uh, so yeah, you know, I think compensation. it's something that if, if what you are saying, um, I might go by it. I think it's something that I, as a youth organizer, who wants MPP to stay in power 2024 and beyond, I'll look into that. Because the more you are in the, uh, at your job place and you are not productive, you became dull. And uh, you don't even learn anything. And that is not good. That's to That's tell you that. Uh, the, the previous reference you made, that uh, Mahama said he was not going to employ anybody yeah. um, by your words. I mm -hmm. don't think that's exactly what he said. But uh, I, I think that's I think, what he said. No, no, okay, no, you are paraphrasing, yeah. yes. But that's to tell you that if they tell you that the public sector is full, it's full. Or someone for said it in your administration. So I mean, I actually the never heard from that. Full. What I I've, I've never heard of Safuman for. You rather get the direct information that public sector is full. You have encouraged the youth. For to go into entrepreneurship, Dr. Baumia has said that right. several times. Uh, and I'm one of the finance guys, minister yeah. has said that several times. Uh, yeah. Is that any, is there anything wrong with that? No, there's nothing wrong with uh, people going going into that sector. But I just want you to know that that Nanado was able to do what somebody couldn't do. You understand by uh, by creating 2.2 million jobs, and we are even going in by next year to create another one point something million jobs. Listen. If we, if we as a government don't know, like, know that there's nothing to, for, uh, to do, we wouldn't recruit. But we know there's something to, for people to do. You understand? You, to get, you don't, don't get me wrong. It might be that one person just went to work and you know, don't want to work and just be walking around and use that as, as an excuse. Or probably he wants to be sitting in an office with air conditioning and there's like, listen, go into the field. And the person don't want to do it. And he makes a sense like, oh, um, you know, I come to work, there's nothing to do. Uh, by the end of the month, I take money. So at the time it would be, you know. All right. So um, uh, we're, we're, sp we're speaking with Prince Guma, who is vying to be the national youth organizer for the NPP. Uh, in my hands is the manifesto of the NPP 2020 Youth and Sports. It says uh, establish a youth entrepreneurship fund that will provide startup fund for youth entrepreneurs, implement a women in sports program to support female athletes and uh, on earth talents. We talked about sports, but not women. Um, develop a youth in sports module to support young sportsmen um, and women. That's one to a report that is done. Hmm. Uh, let me read this and go for a break. Complete 
the construction of the University of Ghana Stadium construction is ongoing and then develop in partnership with private sector youth and development sports centers in all regions in, and, and stadia in regions without one. Um, promotes youth entrepreneurship, which I'm, of course the campaign is on. Let me take a breather. When we come back, uh, I'll finalize everything with Prince. Welcome back. We're having an interaction with Prince Guma, who wants to, uh, or he's vying to be the national youth organizer for NPP in the coming uh, elections. The primary is on, primaries is gone. They've gotten to the national level. And today we know that the chairman uh, are picking their forms, or chairman hopefuls are picking uh, their forms and will file subsequently. Right. So let's come to you. What has been the performance of the youth um, organizer today that you think, well, something is missing, but I think I will be the best person to fit in? Yeah, uh, uh, there's uh, a couple of things. First of all, I have to give credit to uh, my boss, um, lawyer Nanabi. I think he did well uh, in helping the president to roll out 2.2 um, uh, million jobs. But, uh, you know, the mandate of four years and mm. uh, couldn't let him do much. So there's, um, there's this uh, dissatisfaction among the youth uh, and the implementation uh, that's, for, for my point of view, I think the implementation too uh, wasn't handled it well. And so when I come, I'll, I'll, I'll stand on what he has done and uh, make sure that I do, I do better with implementation and making sure that jobs are going directly to the youth organizers of our party. So now the jobs are not going directly to the youth organizers? Um, yes. Where, where, where like, is it going? Uh, it goes to party. You said 2.2 .2 jobs. Yeah. But it's not going directly to the youth. Yeah, it went but to... who is it going to? Okay, this is what I'm trying to say. It went through, um, to the grassroots, if I might say, you understand. But mm. listen, this is what a youth organizer is important to our party. Our party said that the youth organizer is actually the organs of the party who is supposed to go out and recruit members for the party. And sell and cult cultivate and sell the party ideas, right? Mm -hmm. So a youth organizer is in the best position to get the job opportunity and spread it out, right? Yeah. So, but if you jump a youth organizer and goes to his constituency and give jobs to grassroots without the jobs going through your youth organizer, you make your youth organizer look, excuse me, like useless. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So this is what I said I'm going to do. I want my party to be, a, to be a reflection of the youth organizer. Whatever the government is doing should be in the reflect of the youth organizer. I am going to empower the youth organizer directly. When I go and lobby for jobs and opportunity, I'm sending it directly to the youth organizer. So when the youth organizer is able to give jobs and opportunity to the grassroots, then they will know that, wow, this our youth organizer is actually working. And this youth organizer, will have something to say. I'm helping him, and he's going down there to make sure that the grassroots see the party in him. You understand? But the moment you give opportunity, and the opportunity is not coming from the youth organizer, the grassroots think that he's just a youth organizer. He can't even do anything. You understand? So the youth organizers feel like um, much attention is not being paid to them. And the second thing I wanted to do for our youth organizer is make sure that I have direct communication with my youth organizers. I don't want them to pass through somebody to get to me. You understand? If you're calling you, you're not picking. Yes. If I'm uh, a youth organizer. Yes. If I'm a youth organizer, when I'm going to when I'm going to be a youth organizer, and inshallah I'll be the youth organizer, I'm going to make sure that youth organizers can call me at any time. And apart from that, I'm going to make sure that I have a call center. This call center is going to deal with grassroots that wants to call into my office uh, for uh, one thing or the other. You have a call center? Yeah. For the office of the National Youth, Youth Organizer. Youth Organizer. I will have a call so, center. So you have uh, a set of agents who will be in the office? The human office. being is supposed to be on that call at least 24 hours a day, you know, seven days a week. Because when a youth organizer or a grassroots call in my office to talk to me, and I'm not able to answer. A human being should be able to answer and ask for his concern. So in my, in, in my duty as a youth organizer, there will be a day that I will sit on the phone to return calls of those who call in my office. 
and ask for their issue. And if your issue is even something that I can address before calling you, I'll address your issue, then call you to let you know that, oh, I've gotten your call, and you say you need A, B, and Z to be done, and uh, we have taken care of it. You need a job, or you went to an interview, and you need any help. Hey, you have a, a family issue you need. I'll be there. This grassroots and this our youth organizers just want to be feel part of the government, part of the party. Is it part of the government or part of the party? Both, because without the party, there because wouldn't be a government. Where, that's where then the problem of uh, show your party card before we give you a job to do, show your party card before we, we do this for you. you as a politician, party, party as myself, as, as a politician, as myself, right? I am running for a, a MPP National Youth Organizer. Definitely. I am not running for Ghana Youth Organizer. Definitely. So my first priority is to make sure that the youth of my party are satisfied. For me to, um, and, and, and to make sure that they are part of the, my movement, the party and the party make the government. So I want them to feel part. So I, I, wouldn't, I don't have answers to the other people, but my issue is the youth organizers and the graduate of the party. But that's quite a scary statement to make. I don't think so. Because me, if, for example, yeah. you win and um, you are pursuing this issue of, let's say, football that we've spoken about. Right. And uh, you'd have a way of encouraging government uh, to introduce juvenile football or support, put money in it and all that. And then you have some young people who are coming up. They probably have a background of different political parties, not MPP. Are they going to get a chance into I this? Can, because I, we've spoken a, a lot about issues, jobs, yeah. football, sports, or other things that cuts across regardless of political parties. Okay, I am fortunate to live in a country that when it comes to national issues, everybody put their political colors aside and join the national issue. And I can tell you when it comes to national issue, I will make sure that I actually put the party colors aside and work unity with anybody from any political background for us to make sure that the nation is, uh, 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 is moving forward. And I'm, I'll tell you something. I, am, I have a very good relationship with even my political opponent. Right now, if you go on social media, I will say I am the only youth aspirant that have M NDC people rooting and posting him and, 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 and wishing him well to win because of my relationship with them. And those people, I can tell you, when I become a youth organizer, I will do all I can to bring them to MPP. So I think I, I, I have this tolerance of uh, uh, this in, to my other political parties that when it comes to the national issue, I'll push it. Yeah, I wouldn't use political card when it comes to national issue. I, 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 I'm always sad when it comes to uh, Ghana playing and the government is in power and people think if the uh, Ghanaian win, I mean if Black Star win, it's a credit to the, the government of the day. I'm always sad when it comes to that. You know, I believe that if Ghana win election, I mean a match, it should be about Ghana. And if you are going to be with me for a long period, because I'm going to be a youth organizer of this party, and I know you will be around with me and you will see my work. I will make sure that I work in the interest of Ghana. But when it comes to political, I owe it to the people that vote for me. And those are the MPP grassroots and the youth organizers. Look into the camera of Hamas up and tell your, um, um, who, who, those who are going to vote uh, why you think they should vote for you. Uh, thank you for this question, Ifua. I think it's very necessary and I'm grateful for that. To my youth organizers and my TESCON, uh, Prince Kamal Guma is one of the aspirants who's leading this uh, contest. And I, I want you people to judge all the aspirants by their track record. Uh, our party's in power. We are not in opposition. And if your party's in power for six years, at least you should have something to show that you did for the grassroots before you come and you are asking for a national office. And what I'm saying right now, anybody listen from, listening to me from anywhere around the globe, I want you to use your phone and look at it and see what I'm saying if it is wrong. I am the only aspirant right now that have donated 76 motorbikes for 24 constituency. I am the only aspirant right now currently sitting down that constructed 49 boreholes for 28 co communities. I'm the only aspirant that adapted another 20 to 30 cons uh, constituency on the election day, operation feed the pulley agent at the police station. I am the only aspirant right now, as I'm sitting down, I don't, I'm not even a government appointee. I don't owe any government appointee, but I'm the only youth organizer or aspirant right now that is able to make sure that I started helping 
youth and the grass right now. In my office, I, have, I, I, I was able to help people to get a job. I was able to pay school fees. I'm able to do this. So when you, when you are weighing some, the person that you think is, going, is supposed to lead, don't look at anywhere. Just look at Prince Kamal Guma. My track record is there for you to see. For these six years, you people should judge us by what, you, what we do. And commanders that we call you, please don't listen to all this. I'm from here. I'm from this is my friend. Let's stop all these big names and, and I'm from this big office. Uh, this, this, I'm, I'm the most handsome guy in the race. I'm this. I'm, no, let's stop that. <laughs> what have you done for the, uh, the grassroots? If you cannot point what, if they cannot point what they have done for grassroots for all these years, my brother, don't go there. Because the moment you vote for somebody because somebody tells you to vote for them, Remember, after the vote, they are not going, you are not going to see them again. So my brothers, the calls will come. When you get the call to go and vote for somebody because he's somebody, boy, just listen to them. But when the moment you enter the box, remember yourself. Who can empower you? Who has the, uh, the history of empowering people? And you will see that Prince Kamal Guma stand tall among all these qualified aspirants of helping out. What if you are the most handsome? Um, that's they, another they, credit. They shouldn't vote for you. Um, with my, <laughs> with my, actually with my track record of um, helping the grassroots, I think I stand tall. I, 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 I wasn't there just by myself. And uh, I, uh, I'm, I'm the only aspirant right now that you can count more than 10 constituencies that I was actually a campaign team member in just, just 2024. And this is one thing that I want Ghanaians to know. I've never worked for MPP for money. I, if, I, I can tell. Yeah, when I, when I worked for, when I went for trainer training program under Joe Anochi in 2020, I, I've never taken the money that they were paying us. My group that I traveled with them, I told my group, use, your, use one of your, your Momo number to take whatever the party is going to pay me and share. I love the party. I see. I was born into this party. I see. Our, our time is up, but we have friends. Kamal Guma, with so much drive. I mean, I went through his profile. I'm sure you, <laughs> you were encouraged at the age 14. Started doing very active things that I probably wouldn't have thought of at the age 14. Thank you for coming through. I wish you all the best uh, on your uh, campaign. So, Commanders, that's Prince Kamal Guma. Thanks for coming again. Thank you. For, I really appreciate this. And thanks for the time. And I'll come back again. Right. Yeah. We'll, we'll see you when you are victorious. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks for watching.